We are Tiny Talks Tuesday, Health in the Making, and today we are discussing what is good hydration. I am Ella Mesma. I am a yoga teacher, a dance artist, and I run a project called Business Yoga, which is all about putting wellness at the heart of the workplace. And I'm very excited to have joined up with Rory. We're both passionate about the same things, and we would love to share with you our insights and some some learnings every other Tuesday. So it's great to have you here. Over to Rory Lemonade. Hi there, my name is Rory Lemonade and I'm an osteopath and I have specialist interest in helping people with chronic conditions such as stress related chronic conditions especially and um, I'm also dyslexic so you might hear some papers rustling and trying to get my words in the right order in a short space of time is one of the challenges I deal with uh, so I'm always writing things down and getting things out on paper as quick as I can and just to get through life <laughs> so yes um, so, so yeah here is my cup of green tea <laughs> and when it comes to hydration, I, I really, when we started this topic, I was like, oh yeah, drinking loads of water. Um, and then I got a little bit of surprise as I'm often surprised by Rory Lemonade because you've got a lot to say about this topic and it's not just about water to reduce thirst, right? It's about much more than that. Correct, absolutely. Um, but in fact, um, I'll just put a question to you, Ella, and also the viewers, and that's a good point if there's people watching put put um questions in the comments and we can have a look at them uh, afterwards and but yeah, apart from water do you know of any other ways to hydrate I know. <laughs> <laughs> let's just give a bit of a moment in case anyone wants to type something <laughs> i've got a favorite though i'm a little bit obsessed with watermelons um and i feel like they're they're so much i'm thinking of like the the vegetables and the the fruits that are very water-based, so watermelons. And the other one I'm thinking of is coconuts, um, especially, you know, like if you're on an amazing beach in Brazil and you're feeling dehydrated, and remember them saying something about electrolytes, like it's, like it's almost like you will, you will hydrate quicker with coconut water. Is that correct? Yes, and there's a lot of different types of substrates and electrolytes that are in water that, mm. um, uh, that we that will go into. Absolutely. Um, so yes, electrolytes is exactly the thing, but there are other things that also, and I'll explain this now, um, because what happens is, is that when we, um, when we break it down to sort of particle levels, it's about particle charge. So when, I, when we talk about that, there's negatively charged particles that give off electrons. And for us, that helps to balance our blood pH and replenish our muscles and nerves for refiring. So it can mm. basically be a, a, um, a fluid chemical reaction thing that we need from the electrons. That, and it can also be direct electrons that go to a much more electrical firing tissues like muscles and nerves as well. Okay. Um, so bl blood pH, like body temperature, needs to be in a very kind of certain narrow range in order for the chemical reactions to occur efficiently within our blood and body, which helps us to either break down or build up muscles and nerves and cells and tissues. So it's called hydration because of the hydrogen atoms in the water that can either carry electrons or give them off freely, depending on whether there's a charge going on or a chemical reaction that requires electrons or giving them off again, depending on it's building or breaking so down. It's, so it's like they're either building up or they're breaking down, depending on, on, what, on what you put into your body? Absolutely, yeah, mm. lots of different environmental factors. And, and, um, and hydrogen ion is the simplest of... Um, uh, elements it's the first one in the periodic table so it's, it walks around and just takes one electron or gives it off and it, it's it's i'm it's being a hydrogen element, element. <laughs> one. One. Okay, um, awesome. yeah so it, it, it gives them off and or takes them back depending on what type of chemical action is happening okay. and we can do a fun demo on that in fact 
Yay. I feel like um, we're going back to, do you remember Sesame Street and they do the fan demos? We're like, yeah, exactly. Ernie exactly. and Big Bird. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so Ella, you are a hydrogen atom. Okay. Yes, I am. All elements. Here I am, having a little bit of fun. <laughs> and you are negatively charged. Oh, no. And, uh, be, uh, but that's a good thing. Okay, um, because good. you're counting an electron. Well, it's good for us. Okay, I'm, I'm happy. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> um you're carrying an electron okay um, good let's i am see that. here is wow. my electron so this is a, a negative electron you, well, the, uh, all, all electrons are negative you see. amazing so, um minus. Uh, see the minus there yeah so <laughs> you you've been ingested into the viewer's blood for instance and you're carrying this electron and i'm a positively charged particle in, oh hey positive particle then uh, the viewers say for instance nerve Okay. Nerve cell, nerve cell. Awesome. Um, because electricity, which is made of pure electrons, traveling from negative to positive. So it's, re you know, it's there always, electri electricity is always there to try to get, well, it, it, it's by law of nature, it has to flow to the positive, char positive charge to balance it out. That's why they're drawn that way. Mm -hmm. So when you've, entered the body and I and at a certain point you must pass me the electron so, so it's, it's making me think of you know like if you have um ice and it melts because it's gonna it's gonna match room temperature is it kind of like that is that why I have to pass you this yes. electron yes so here so, it comes <laughs> wow wow now, you're shiny and bright and now the and now the nerve cell has been lit up or at least recharged. Oh, can you can you bring that beautiful nerve cell back? Because it looks so happy and shiny. <laughs> so yeah. is is that nerve cell positive or negative or balanced? It's What's now balanced. It? Well, the thing is that um, it, it, these electrons are just flying about all over the place, part of the chemical reaction. So it will get used up in our nerves firing, but it needed it to recharge before. But the electron could also go to our muscle cells or just go to any chemical reaction that's happening in the body too. Mm. It's kind of making me think about in yoga, we talk about like what we're doing in yoga is we're yoking. Um, yeah, so in yoga we unite um, and, and we often talk about like the masculine and the feminine energy within the body and that we want to balance the two, the two energies within the body to become whole. We need to acknowledge all sides of us. Does that feel like a relevant demonstration? <laughs> it's um, um well yes i mean you can always relate one thing with another in terms of the, that sounds like a you know um, um, a psycho psych, psychological thing to still see about how we look at you know because that's that it goes right down to the positive and negative mm. but and that's how our brain works as well we think about positive and negative or yin and yang uh, yeah or opposing forces, but they're just things that are interchanging all the time as mm. well so yes, you can break it right down to that point, but it's, it, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean it's um, how, to how to describe it really. But yeah, I can, I can see how it's useful to look at things as, as a whole and um, embrace the changes that are happening mm. as a whole too. Well, I, loved, yeah. your, I loved the demonstration and, and I love the fact that that means that the nerve is charged up and ready to fire again, ready to go. Uh, yes energized yeah so um furthermore those um electrons can be used up in our body more than we uh have because um they're there to neutralize the positively charged particles in say for instance uh acidic foods or mm -hmm. um e environmental factors such as free radicals or radiation Mm -hmm. um, even um, a pool of inflammation that's there to help um, uh, repair our tissues is positively charged. So it's it's it needs electrons to help it calm back down again. Um, ah, um, so so our our tension in our body. You know, I, I'm starting to to see the connection of tension in the muscles and the importance of hydration. Is, yeah, hydration. Yeah, it's a bit, I mean, it's very, we're being as basic as possible to get some understanding going on. You know, there's so much other complex things going on, but it does, it, and also information is important to 
for to do the healing so it needs mm. to be that way so it's not that one thing is worse than the other like we go back to the whole what is bad or good it's it's what's better or worse it's all what's functioning what's dysfunctioning or is it just a, how things are changing yeah but they can go of dysfunction due to accumulation learn and, to um, listen one other thing that can also um be positively charging or making up our acidic is a, um a lot of a lot of glucose it, um glucose coming into the system either through foods or through um stressful spikes because the cortisol gets us ready to run away from the mm. threat so that puts our blood sugars up it takes it from areas in the body so we can either bring out glucose out of our system from, to get ready to run away from the threat or we can be eating too much at one time and get a spike of glucose that way and that can make mm -hmm. up blood too so that can reduce our electrons so it's an interesting fact that the brain constantly listens and analyzes our blood ph when it and and when it shoots up then the ph shoots um into acidic mode for instance such as ingesting the sugars and the or the cortisol spikes it sends messages to release emergency hormones to release the calcium out of our bones that is there to um balance our blood ph in the moment mm. so the thing about you know if you are gorging on fizzy sugary drinks you could potentially be affecting your bones and that's that's one Yay. of the causes for osteoporosis later on in, uh -oh. in life the excessive sugar consumption yeah. so it'd be really nice to do a session at some point on on sugar I, I definitely had an addiction to sugar you know luckily it was probably about 11 years ago now but I went through a phase before I kind of did the work and understood about nutrition where I was really addicted to sugar and I just think it's such an important thing to raise awareness about isn't it or to understand for ourselves and like you said not necessarily judge as good and bad and right or wrong but just know and make the choices and have the information so we can make the choice that's right for us Absolutely. And yeah, not worry about it too much because it's not a one way street. Um, as you know, you can't say for sure what will happen, but you could potentially, you know, stop something, stop some dysfunction in its path and mm -hmm. look at the positives and um, gain some function back, you know, if, yeah. if you've been doing that for a long time, for instance. So uh, can you recommend, like, what, we know water, we know watermelon, we know coconut water, but what else, what, what would you recommend? Like, are there foods that we should be eating? Are there... There's a whole range of other things that give us electrons. Um, <laughs> and so the hydrogen is the, hydrogen particles are the, are the carriers when they're negatively charged. But um, there's a whole load of other things that hydrate our tissues as such and what gives us electrons um mm -hmm. which is um obviously the water then there's foods especially raw and alkaline foods and green i love foods. i love green food i love alkaline food mm -hmm. so like kale for example yeah. broccoli mm. spinach all the yeah. dark ones the chlorophyll in it is the dark green stuff in dark greens so good um that really helps us to and it's again it's that same thing in nature where the trees are breathing the uh, oxygen out and we're getting that and you know it's the same it's the same thing in in, in when we're eating the greens it's just a, a, an evolutionary process i feel mm. that um it's it's helping us to balance back and it's a it's a sort of like you were talking about the harmony again so yeah awesome so um other things that do that are um like the natural naturally occurring vitamin c is negatively charged in terms of got the extra electrons to give mm. off even though it's it's called an acid it's actually still got this electron floating around in it there's also electrolytes that we talked about yeah as well as um the, these are all natural antioxidants so and then there's the salts and minerals uh found in foods and in and and sea air and sea um Ooh. And so we can absorb minerals through our skin much better than we can eat it as well. So, so get yourself to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so there's the natural occurring minerals in our, the main ones are sodium, potassium, calcium, and magnesium. And magnesium. magnesium. I love magnesium. 
Yeah, it's the the relaxation mineral, or has been found to be the main one. But they're, obviously, they're all quite important for bodily mm. processes. So um, it's the main one for helping switch off muscles again after they've been used and calming down nerves again. So awesome! So I will be posting some links for some great magnesium products. I am a massive fan of making my little magnesium drinks. <laughs> Excellent. Um, say so. Say so. But there's some so, some people say that touching the ground with with the hands and the skin pure pure bare skin will dramatically replenish electrons within our system in a, in the moment um and then there's importantly carbon dioxide as well that is a big role in blood ph balance so mm. um optimum carbon dioxide levels in the blood keep our blood acidity regulated mm. and this, as discussed in our last tiny talk, number four, um, the, the the poor prolonged stress-related breathing patterns over time can lead to a learned lack of CO2 in the blood. So the brain is used to it being short. And, um, and let's go. Um, feel like we're running out of breath because we've learned to feel like we're running out of breath, not because that CO2 is bad. Um, and mm. it, in our blood, that, so the um, slowing it, that can slow down our chemical reactions and reduce the oxygen's capacity to get to the tissues. And by the again, way, when Rory says COD, he's talking about carbon dioxide. <laughs> yes, yeah, CO2. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, so the, yeah, the lack of that could also be increasing the muscle tension and the, and the nerve function. So, mm. how do we know it's not just the fact that we're how we're breathing that causes all these tensions and things and lack of chemical reactions in the body so it's a major thing that's why i go to that as a thing to check out for mm -hmm. people when they're, when they're if we're thinking about what's going on in their life interesting um, so it's one of it's now one of my favorite things to go to is breathing patterns and um, you can you can check out more about rory and the amazing techniques he uses to help you with your general well-being which we will talk about later. <laughs> um, so breath hold work such as Kundalini yoga and expert <laughs> and um, Butego breathing methods, um, that, which I've been that's studying. That's what does. <laughs> <laughs> I've been studying with, um, uh, I did the, the in initial classical Butego breathing method introduction course and this can help retrain the brain to allow optimum levels of co2 back in over time again it takes time it's a practice and it's not necessarily easy but mm. we can go through a little test uh, uh, at the end of here about um a little test and, 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 a, and a little show of how that might pr that process you could start to think about at least awesome looking forward to that on. and so yeah um Next, and oh, the final thought on hydration by water alone could be possibly flushing out some of those minerals through the kidneys. Um, if your system, you know, is if, if you're taking that into your system excessively, uh, just on its own, so and that's also depending on your lifestyle condition and state of blood. That's why it's good to have a variety of hydration techniques mm -hmm. that we talked about here, too. Mm -hmm. I see. So um, we've kind of covered the, the variety of hydration techniques. I feel like we're, we're kind of clear on that. Um, would you agree? Is there anything you want to add to those suggestions? Any questions from the audience? I'd love to hear any other ideas as well. Yeah, for sure. If not, it would be really cool to hear about some breathing techniques. But do you want to add anything, Rory, on hydration? Um. If you're talking, if you're talking about water, then um, you know, again, it depends on your situation, your general size, as to how much you might need throughout the day. Mm -hmm. If you're drinking more than four liters a day, and you're hydrating in other ways, and you're still thirsty, it might be worth checking in with your doctor um, mm -hmm. or holistic nutritional therapist or osteopath. 
um, and the best time to drink water is in the morning on an empty stomach so it can get straight through the stomach into the gut and flush things out a little bit into the mm-hmm. tissues your your so that's a that's a good point to drink you know a decent amount of water before you eat because when you eat you need water to digest stuff so it draws water so you can you could be dehydrating yourself before you hydrate i do i do do that as well i my little morning routine is get up brush teeth drink water and then and then you know i actually won't eat for quite a while because i think there's something about that just allowing the the hydration to happen yes 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 and finally uh, other times that are good in the day is before and after exercise or Mm -hmm. sauna when you're sweating a lot and before bed as well, many people think that they might drink water and then need the toilet more. Um, but actually, um, it's important to drain your tissues and help them re- re- again hydrate overnight. So maybe it's better to drink a bit more awesome. water and then get up after a deeper sleep rather than be more sleeping lighter anyway and waking up earlier because you might be dehydrated. Sure, so, that makes a lot but, of sense. But also, not just the water, it could be a breathing technique that you do before you sleep to hydrate as well now that you know that helpful technique thank you Rory so are you going to show us a breathing technique today we always like to close with a little demonstration a little experience that you can step into so I think today Rory you have a breathing technique to show us yes for sure um I'd like to just explain quickly about um the control pause in the Buteco breathing method, which is just a way of checking to see how much CO2 is in your system at that moment or whether your brain uh, is sensing other stuff. And it, um, as well, it's, a, it's very complicated in a way, but to keep it simple, you can kind of, it's not just one reading that tells you instantly about everything you have to you have to check your control pause regularly throughout the day if, you know four times a day if you're looking at to do something to change something and also guidance mm. is really important as well on this so if you're looking about okay. changing your health um, with breath work it's much better to be or, or even a con- uh, looking at health conditions chronic conditions it, it's much better to be running that with someone that knows what they're talking about because you can get drifted off or not do things accurately and we're just doing Mm -hmm. a little taster here okay so a control pause is a comfortable breath hold until you feel you need to just just before you need to uh, feel like you want to breathe in again and you can time that so for instance um if you just comfortably breathe in not to, not all the way, not strong, strong. Just breathe in comfortably to the end range on a, on a relax. And then breathing out to the neutral. And then holding the nose, you can time it a bit. So I'm not going to carry on going, but... But basically, uh, there's different... There's different um, when you feel like you're comfortable to breathe in, then that's basically to um, not rush the air when you come back to breathing in again. So that's mm-hmm. where you can check it. Um, I wasn't going into the longevity of that process, but I wanted to say that you can do a breath hold, and a lot of a lot of people that haven't done this might it might be quite short, and so you've got to sort of really play around with it and try different types of breathing techniques as well. So without going into too much detail, the control pause is a way to check that. And so that was a little test, but you can also hold your breath for a short amount of time. So we'll do a little breath hold and then you can basically breathe in like a little mouse, fast, light, as long as the breath is really light. Or Mm. you can breathe in again, light, long and slow, but that actually creates more air exchange. So it all depends on about whether you're going to feel uncomfortable you don't want to create too much uncomfort unless you're again being monitored by a, an expert and all that sort of stuff because you don't want to cause too much stress mm-hmm. uh, in the system when you're doing breath hold work and it's difficult to know how you know it's different for every every person sure so so let's just do that again so let's just do say for instance um let's do 15 seconds hold amazing breath in breath out first hold (sighs) 
seems like quite a long time for some people. And then you're going to go. Oh, you're doing the mouse. Is that the mouse? Yeah, you can do it right. in a way that's very sort of, uh, dip, dip, but try to relax everything as much as you can as well. So you're basically creating not very much air exchange so that you don't blow off too much carbon dioxide once you've started to store it back in. Oh, interesting. That makes sense. Mm. So that's one way to just increase your carbon dioxide lightly. And then you can come back to, um, and you might feel like you want to take a deep breath or, or um, and it's okay to, but you've got, you've got to try to sort of get to that level of where it's not too tense, where you don't feel too suffocatey, <laughs> as it were, but you, you, you just play around with it. It can, be, it can actually feel like a buzz that's nice, mm -hmm. or it can feel, like I say, tense. You don't want to push too hard. It's that playing around with it. If you've not done it before, then it can be really interesting to play around with it, but, but also... You know, yeah. So it can, it can. You don't want to overdo overdo it too quickly. I have a question. Uh, yes. Um. Are you so you inhale, you exhale, and then you're holding your breath out um, for those fifteen a, seconds. It's a, a neutral point. Yeah. A neutral so point. so when you breathe in and then you just relax till you you're not pushing, squeezing the air all the way out. But okay. you, But but wherever you test the control pause, this whole point is to do it the same each time. So. That's why a neutral point is, and sometimes if you if you take a deep breath in and hold, you're going to have more air in your lungs to ho hold for longer. So it's going to give you bigger numbers. Yeah, it's, it's about is... where, wherever you do it, and they talk, the it's classical we take over breathing method is about doing it neutral, so you get a a true representation and you're relaxed and not mm -hmm. sort of like holding or squeezed out and wanting to breathe in. And because if you squeeze out, and you hold, interesting, you, you might rush it back in too quick. Yeah. It's about that light breathing. So it's tiny mouse or just really dropped and just pulling the diaphragm in slowly. So the air doesn't exchange quickly. And then again, you, you, you're, you're monitoring how you feel as you go along. So Super we can do one, one, one more. Yes, this please. A, a final sort of check because once you've got into it, it's good to just do it three or four times. Yeah, um, it's interesting as well because in my training in Kundalini, I'm used to doing long, deep breathing and, and long inhale, inhale and then hold. So I'm having to like undo my own patterns to, yeah, to go with you. They're all, they're all different patterns. They're I mean, all different ways of doing things. And actually that sounds quite like how Wim Hof does things. It's the, mm. you know, is very much like a um, bellows get as much oxygen and carbon dioxide going on but probably blowing quite a lot of carbon dioxide off but you're getting so much you're, you're getting an, an oxygen rush but that's another that's another tool mm. to say okay let's try um, this okay so one more time we just breathe in normally and out go to neutral hold relax the head Really try to relax because holding yourself can make you feel tense. So wherever you feel you need to breathe in, maybe hold it a couple of seconds and then back to... Because obviously I've been on the talking, so actually it's it's been... And, and, and it's quite, you know, it's, it's not necessarily nerve wracking, but it, it racks up your nerves. When yeah, you're... it's really interesting. That's what I experienced. I, so I experienced you... an, an element of that, like, and then hearing you going relax was really helpful. Yeah. And actually so at the end with the little, the mouse, the mouse moment, I'm calling it the mouse. Um, I yeah. felt quite like that was quite calming. That had a really calming effect. Yeah. And you sort of ride that wave of feeling like you want to take a bigger breath and you do that for as long as you can, but you don't want to get too tense again. So it's that playing around with the tension point and maintaining that for longer periods. And you, and then, yeah, then there's more in, um, advanced or intermediate ways of doing things as well once you've got the hang of it. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's stuff to play around with. How can um, so, we learn more? How can we practice with you? <laughs> well, um, I can assess breathing patterns um, online and um there's you can look into the buteyko breathing b-u-t-e-y-k-o breathing techniques i'll write it it's, here and we'll put it in the um comments as well 
and that basically is um, there's different types of practitioners for different different areas. So there's some people who work with athletes to keep them up up their game. Some people are classical people take their breathing methods. Uh, practitioners are, are sort of helping with people with chronic conditions. So mm. you've, you've, you've kind of got the interplay of two different aspects there. One's at the top of their game, but maybe running out of energy because their breathing pattern is different than they need to keep their energy up. And one is that it's like there's a, there's a fatigue issue problem or some kind of chronic issue mm. problem. You need to do that um, in a different way. It's a similar method ways of doing so it's all individual to awesome. the, to the person. i can at least um see how i could work with training breathing patterns or pass on to someone that i think is more specialist if necessary depending on the type of person beautiful sorted i also if anyone is interested i'm actually teaching a kundalini class this evening and we are going to focus on um long deep breathing so if you want to sample a slightly different breathing technique then do come along you can find the link in my bio and I'll also post the link it's been beautiful Rory I always learn things with you and it was very fun to be able to feel like Big Bird and um, Ernie for a moment yeah exactly and it, and it, it takes um, appreciation from another side to for it to work as well because I learn things from just being able to talk and, and, and find things <laughs> that you've, you question and ask too so it's all all good it's all good learning isn't it and it is we will be back in two if you ever have a request of something you want to learn more about if you want to quiz the um the amazing mind of Rory <laughs> if you want to ask a more yogic kind of journey of a question then just get in touch and we would love to help we would love to be of service so thank you Rory thank you everyone no worries let's um, make it better yes one of those. See you next time.